chapter, it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom an hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. Read. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then said these men, why shall we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of his God? All the presidents of the kingdom and the governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute. And to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the dens of lions. Wherefore, Daniel, King Darius, Sign the writing and the decree. Read. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he knelt upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Again, Father, I thank you. And I ask you, Lord, to help us to see beyond the realm of the natural into the supernatural and help us to trust you and understand that you are far beyond anything that we could imagine lord i'm asking you lord take the blinders off our eyes help us to see you for who you are and let the words of my mouth whew, glory and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, in Jesus' name. Come on, just lift your voice for just a moment.
Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Daniel, the sixth chapter, these words. Verse number eight says, Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. And wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. And now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Would you look at somebody and ask them how big is your God. That's what I want to talk to you about. How big is your God? The greater challenge of our times is rooted in the philosophical understanding of this generation. We have access to more information than we have ever had. And because of this access, everything that is said is constantly being fact-checked. And there's a major problem with that. It really depends on who and what the source that you're using to fact-check. Amen. I found there is a law in this country that says that government is able to withhold information for 50 years. And during those 50 years, they hold back vital information that would give out truths concerning events that take place. And the reason they withhold it is because the government doesn't want to be liable for things that they have done. And so they will allow the talking heads, the politicians, the media, and anybody who decides they want to join in the conversation to come up with wild speculative ideas. And then they will rehearse them, They'll make them into documentaries and movies and depending on which one you see, you will get a view based upon the limited information of those who are writing those particular things. I have found that we have more access than we have ever had. We are doing less with more and we are so preoccupied that now the word of God has been challenged by those who really don't know the Bible I'm talking about in the church it used to be you came up on one of us we knew the Bible well we don't know the Bible like that no more because we don't read the Bible like that no more we don't spend our time like that. We got too much time for games. Five, six hours on the game system. We got a scripture that pop up on our phone. That's our word for the day. Praise the Lord. We know whole teams, every position. We know all of their stats. And we know three scriptures. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're living in a time where people do not really know about God. Most of their ideas are based upon 
television and some app that they downloaded, some clickbait on social media, whichever format it happens to be. Amen. So-called theologians and prophets and prophetess and apostles and jokers <laughs> all over the place are popping up. And you guys are allowing them to tune into your ears. Praise the Lord. They got you believing all kinds of stuff. Stuff you won't even go and read your own Bible about. Amen. And all of this has brought us to a place that it has minimized who God is. We really don't know him like we used to know him. Amen. We don't. Uh, yeah, we, we got baptized the right way. Yes, and we spoke in tongues. That's right. Amen. But after that experience, amen, that's just a new birth. We didn't go on to grow in grace and in the knowledge of him. Somebody say amen. amen. And so it has created, amen, a generation that is ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. A generation that is tossed to and fro with every wind in doctrine. Praise the Lord. The great challenge of our time is not whether or not we believe in God. Uh, you can almost find that everywhere. The real question is, how big is your God? What is he able to do? Some of us are of the philosophy, God helps them that help themselves. Amen. And we don't really mean God is going to help us. We mean we do everything and that's God's help. Praise the Lord. And, and, and no faith God. Amen. And then others uh, are of the mindset, I do nothing. And God does everything. Even though the scripture says faith without works is. We have a quandary in our society. Because we're challenged. Amen. Now things are changing in our culture. Uh, people are clearly open to saying what they want and demanding what they want and believing what they want. And we have raised a generation of people who believe, amen, that they're not supposed to suffer for their faith. Amen. And it's almost as if we have read them fairy tales and not the Bible. Amen. We've got to come to a place that we begin to rediscover the omnipotence of God. Amen. We've got to rediscover that he is the all-powerful one. Amen. We've got to learn again that the scripture ascribes that all power belongs to God. And to him all things are possible. Somebody say hallelujah. The psalmist says these words in 147 and 5. Great is our God and of great power and his understanding is infinite. Yeah, there's nothing beyond his ability. I don't know how deep your problem is. I don't know how bad it is. I don't know what you're facing. But we've got to come back to the place that we start believing that God has power to change anything. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. When, when we proclaim that God is omnipotent. Amen. We, we are not just saying that he has ultimate power over all things. But we are saying that he is the source of all power. Amen. And therefore, he sets limits on his creation, even though he himself is limitless in strength, wisdom, love, holiness, and his ability to perform 
according to his sovereign will. Amen. I, I want you to understand he is the only uncaused entity in all creation. Everything has a beginning, but God has no beginning and no end. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. The Bible begins to teach us he made everything, every planet, every beam of light, every law of nature, every human heart. God made everything. Praise the Lord. Everything, amen, has its origin from him. He is the creator of all. And can I tell you, amen, the Bible says these words in Psalm 62, 11, God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Power belongeth unto God. He is the source of my strength. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yes, yes, the psalmist says these words in Psalms 19, 1 through 4. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament show forth his handiwork. And day unto day utter speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. And there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone throughout all the earth, and their words to the end of the world in them have he set a, a tabernacle for the sun what are you trying to tell us writer i'm trying to tell you god is over everything amen and he's got all power in his hands somebody shout hallelujah Yes, hey guys says these words, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former house, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. We've got to understand that God has all the power, amen, to bring about his will, amen. But I got a question for for you today and that is how big is your God yes yes we got to get to the place amen that we can begin to testify amen that God is bigger than my situation and bigger than my problem and bigger than my struggle and bigger than my resources and bigger than my knowledge and bigger than my understanding tell somebody amen God is bigger than all of it yes 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 the psalmist says these words in 57 through 15 oh hear my people and I will speak O Israel I will testify against thee I am God even God amen I will not reprove thee for the, for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offering to that you make continually before me I will take no bullock of thine house nor goats of thy foes for every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle upon the hills is mine and I know all the fowls of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine if I were hungry I would not tell thee for the world is mine and the fullness thereof somebody shout hallelujah Yes, yes, we must come to the place to understand that he is an all-sufficient God. Yes, he is not dependent. Yes, he tells us to praise him, but God's not dependent upon your praise. And yes, he tells us to give a man an offering, but God is not dependent upon your offering. Yes, yes, he tells us to lift our hands, amen, and shout with the voice of triumph. But can I tell you, God is not dependent, praise the Lord, upon your shout. He is all sufficient. Yes, he has all the power. Yes, he has all the ability to get 
done whatever he decides to do. The Bible says these words in Jeremiah, my God, 32, 17, for our God, amen, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm and there is nothing too hard for thee. Tell somebody there's nothing too hard for God. Yes, yes, that's where we are struggling with God because we think our problem, amen, is too hard for him. Our sickness is too hard for him, amen. Our need is too hard for him. Our dilemma is too hard for him. I'm reminded in Genesis 18, amen, when God begins to speak to Abram concerning his future child, praise the Lord, Sarah laughed, praise the Lord, and said, surely of a surety bear I a child when I am old. And can I tell you, amen, God began to hear Sarah laughing, praise the Lord, my God. And he responded to her and said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? I don't care if you are past the time, amen, your deadline is already come come and gone amen i don't care if everything is seems to be late there is nothing too hard for god somebody shout hallelujah yes yes we're struggling amen because we have made God small praise the Lord and we have put him under things praise the Lord we have made him into a statue in amen a few words almost like abracadabra I've got to say abracadabra or something of that sort but can I tell you God's not your tongues yes yes you spoke in tongues but God is bigger than your tongues praise the Lord God's not your dance yes your dance was nice but God is bigger than your my God your little dance and God's not those goosebumps mm, my God you feel in the service God is bigger than those goosebumps somebody say help me to believe you're bigger Lord my God, the Bible, the Bible begins to teach us some things concerning God. <laughs> Why do you do this, Lord? Because my people are starting to look at me, amen, in the wrong way. <laughs> We're acting as if he has no power, no ability, as if circumstances, deadlines, and insufficiency, amen, will cause him to struggle. <laughs> but can I tell you? you praise the lord the bible says these words in first corinthians 10 26 the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof the world praise the lord and they that dwell in it. god is in control of everything i know it may not feel like it it may not look like it but god is in control of everything. Somebody shout glory. My God, the Bible, you sit down here. The Bible tells us over the time that the children of Israel were in bondage to Babylon. Yes, 70 years of bondage. And can I tell y'all, when Nebuchadnezzar came in, a man, he was anointed. God sent him in there to humble them. Y'all got to understand what God does with chess and trials. They humble us. They prove us. They reveal our motivation. They reveal our faith. You ain't got a problem when you got God. You just got to understand what God is doing. Lord have mercy. And so God put them under. Nebuchadnezzar. 
God. And he told them they're going to be 70 years that you're going to be in this place. And when Nebuchadnezzar came in, he took the best and he put them to work. Listen here. God knows how to make the best. Even in the bad situation. God knows how to get something good out of you. Even in bondage. God knows how to get a praise out of you. In the midst of your storm. Shall glory. And my God, the Bible tells us of some of these men that were down there. Y'all know about those three boys. But Daniel was there at the same time. And God gave all of them positions. And can I tell you, all the position is not for your ego. The position is to accomplish a task. You ought to tell somebody, get out yourself. You too busy running around talking about how favored you are. And God has put you there for an assignment. Not for your glory, but for his glory. Lift your voice and say, Lord, use me. But let me get out the way. And so Daniel is here. Can I tell y'all, Daniel is down there. My God, during those times, he's under bondage. Lord, have mercy. But then, then, Lord, have mercy. The Bible tells us here in Daniel, the sixth chapter, it pleased Darius to set them over the kingdom. 120 princes, my God, who should rule the kingdom. And the Bible said, and over them three presidents, whom Daniel was first. Can I show y'all something? Staggered leadership. Even the devil uses staggered leadership. Lord, have mercy. We're in the church and we fight leadership. But the devil knows it takes principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness and the spiritual wickedness in high places. Tell somebody, get in place. You don't understand what you're doing. Get in place. Shagrow. My God, he said Daniel was first, that the princes may give account unto them, and the king would have no damage. And what he was trying to do, take the pressure off the king. Lord, I wish I could get some help. Take the pressure off your pastor. Stop trying to be little queens and little kings and take the pressure off. And the Bible says, this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because he had an excellent spirit in him. Lord, have mercy. I could preach right there. He had the kind of spirit. He knew to say yes, sir, and follow along. He didn't have a hidden agenda, but he was focused. Whatever you want, Darius, I'm going to give it to you. Whatever you want, you're right. Whatever you want. And the Bible says, the king thought to set him over the whole realm. And the Bible says, and this Daniel was preferred. And then the presidents and the princes, they was looking for a way to get Daniel. 
out of office. And the Bible says, and they couldn't find nothing. What kind of man is this? His integrity is right. His speech is right. His spirit is right. And the only thing they could find was his God. Lord have mercy. He said he was faithful. There wasn't no error a fault found in him we might as well go there and these men couldn't find any occasion except they find it concerning the law of God and so they got together and they said what we need to do is we need to ask Daniel we need to put him in a position that he got to choose between the king and God and the Bible says they came up with a decree and the decree was 30 days no prayers 30 days no worship 30 days you can't make no sacrifices somebody say help me Lord y'all better hear me the Bible says Lord have mercy he came to Darius and they said this is good for you king they were really deceiving him this is good for you king cause whoever disobeys you shall be cast into the den of the lions oh king establish this establish this according to the laws of the Medes and the Persians and they cannot be altered and the Bible says Barry signed it and when it was signed Lord have mercy Daniel knew it you got to know when the devil is trying to get you to compromise to throw in the towel you got to know when the devil is trying to get you to backslide and you got to believe that my God is bigger my God is greater my God is more powerful and the Bible says when Daniel knew that the writing was signed he went into the house he said listen y'all I know what he said but this is about me and my God he opened the window kneeled on his knee prayed day and night night and day and he said Lord I thank you I thank you that you're so good that I'm willing to die for you I thank you you're so good I'm willing to live for you I believe that you'll allow me to go through this trial because you can trust me how big is your God and the Bible said the men went back and they told the king and the king came to Daniel and he said Daniel oh Daniel you're of the captivity of Judah and regarded not the king and the Bible says Lord have mercy Daniel wasn't concerned Daniel didn't give up Daniel said oh king I'm not going to be disrespectful 
live forever. I know what you said, King, but my God is bigger. My God is bigger than finances. My God is bigger than my health conditions. My God is bigger than the devil. And for this, I'll give you praise. was commanded to be cast into the lines of the end. And the king spake and said, Oh, Daniel, whom thy God, whom thou service continually, will he deliver thee and put a stone in front of the den and laid it upon the den and sealed it. Lord have mercy. The king said, I can't change. My name is wrapped up with this. But Daniel, Daniel had an excellent spirit. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord, Lord. The king went to the palace. He passed the night fasting. Neither with instruments of music. He didn't go to sleep because he was worried. Can I tell y'all, I want the devil to worry that I'm still praising God, that I kept my testimony, that I'm still holding on because my God is so big. Late in the midnight hour, Look at somebody and say, Now under him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above more than I can ask or think. Because God is bigger than my thoughts. And went with haste to the den of the lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake to, to Daniel and said, Oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, is that God whom thou servest? continually able to deliver thee from the lions. Lord have mercy. See that guy didn't know how big Daniel's God was. Is he able to deliver you? And Daniel look at something and say I got a word for you. Uh -huh. Daniel gave the king a word. O king live forever. That's when you know you're doing good, when you can come out your trial with respect. You can come out your situation and still maintain your composure. Woo. This is a guy that threw him in the, in, in the den, and he said, live for, you, you wanted me dead, and I'm saying, live forever. Praise the Lord. Woo. Daniel said, my God, have sent his angel. Lord, have mercy. Shut the mouth of the lions. Woo! They have not hurt me. For as much as before him, I'm before him in innocency and was found in me. And also before me, O king, I have done no hurt. Woo! Lord, have mercy. And the Bible said the king got happy. That's when you know something good going on when your enemy get happy. Said the king was glad. 
Praise the Lord. The king was glad. Praise the Lord. He said and commanded that he should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den. No manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. I want to challenge you today. How big, how big is your God? What can you hear that make you shrink? See, because that's, that's a lot of things, you know. See, you go to the store and you got, a, you got $10 and they say $35. Uh, you start putting stuff back because you ain't got enough. You go to the mechanic to get the car fixed. You thought you was getting a little oil change. And he said, 1500 <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> and then they want to hold your car hostage. <laughs> Sir, ma'am, I can't let you out of here like this. You have a combustible dissolable. <laughs> you don't know what that thing is. The state law says I got to keep your car on the lift. I.e. I'm holding you hostage for $1,500. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I had that happen to me one time. I ain't had no brakes, Ella. When I took the car to the shop, he, he, he worked, he, whoo, he was working. He was trying to get two G's out of me. Two G's. I had a lifetime warranty for brake pads, too. I just said he just changed the pads, and that's it. And when he said that to me, I said, sir, take my car off the lift. He said, no, we can't do that. I said, oh, yes, you will. You're going to take it down right now. He said, no, I can't do that. State law says. I said, it does. So I stood right there. I was praying in my mind, boy. I prayed in my mind. And he turned around, walked back, and said, Sir, I'm not supposed to do this, but he let the car down, <laughs> drove it out. And I took that car, drove it up the street to my house, and parked it in front of my house. Called up one of my friends, and I said, This is what he gave me. He gave me this whole list of stuff. I said, Look at it. He looked at it. He opened up the hood, looked at the, the, uh, the, the well for the brake fluid. He said, that's your problem right there. You ain't got no brake fluid in here. Wow. Went up to the dollar store, got me a dollar bottle of oil. Yeah. Boop! Yeah. Pumped the sucker a little bit to get it down in the line. Yeah. And drove on about my business. Yeah. What am I saying? How big is your God? When you're facing things, is your God able to handle your problems? Or is he just as big as you are? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's the question. Daniel was, hey, he said, King, live forever, man. Live forever, King. Live forever. Because the king was outside saying, is your God able? You've been consistent with him, but is he able? Daniel said, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And now, Daniel told him the right thing. He said, he had found something. I don't know what it was. He found something in me to do this. You know, he found something. You know, because I wasn't trying to hurt nobody. And see, that's where you got to make sure you're not wrong. Praise the Lord. You got to make sure you ain't got no, no cats on. My wife told me that one, cats on the line. Sometimes you be praying, right? And feel like this is what your prayer feel like. Yeah. Yeah. You say, man, it ain't going very far. Sound like an echo when you're praying. Hello, hello. Praise the hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> there might be some cats on the line. You know what the cat is, right? All that stuff you don't want to talk to God about. So Daniel said, hey, I'm here. 
I'm fine. God have allowed me to come through this with no hurt. No hurt. And here's what the Bible says. And the king commanded and they brought those men which had accused Daniel. And they cast them into the den of the lions. Then them, their children, their wives. And this is what the Bible said. The lion had a mastery of them. It was a buffet. Praise the Lord. A mastery. Now, I like watching wildlife. You know them lions that get you around the throat and they don't let go. Then they take their, claw, their little claws and they jam them in your skin and they wait for you to stop moving. They put it right around your throat and say, that's it, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you, that's it, I'm gonna get you. And you stop, you kicking, why are you kicking, he's, he's using a lot of energy, he's just holding, He just tighten up his grip. And the Bible said the lion had a mastery of them. He had a, a dinner of prince because it was the princes there <laughs> and presidents praise the Lord now I want to challenge you because some of us have convinced the devil can do whatever he wants to us and we can, we're convinced that God can't do nothing about it everybody stay yeah we, we're convinced but the Bible shows us very plainly what happened here. But I'll tell you why it happened. Because Daniel believed in a big God. He believed in a big God. And I'm convinced some of us, our God is getting smaller by the minute. He started off big, but he's getting smaller and smaller. I just believe we need to let the Lord renew our minds. Come on, start talking to the Lord. Lord, I need you to change my mind about what I think of you. I need you to change my mind because you are definitely bigger than I see you. You're 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 bigger than I see you. I thought I knew the depths of who you are, but I gotta expand my vision. I gotta expand my vision. See, some things I didn't have to face before, so I didn't have to see God like that. But some things have changed. And because things have changed, my view has to change. See, some of us are always going to have a need because we can't see God beyond the need. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to open this altar. I was, I was looking at some buildings. I was looking at some buildings. And while I was looking at these buildings, they had a whole bunch of them, this construction company, the buildings that they do. And uh, you could see a, the initial picture, but then the whole project. So it was a whole bunch of them. And I looked at the pictures and my eyes fell on one. And I clicked on it. When I clicked on it, the thought came to my mind, why did you click on that one? 
Now there was one that was right next to it that was four times the size of that one. And it was better suited for our needs. And I said, this is what I said to myself. I said, why'd you click on that one? That one right there, you, you're almost gonna be through with that one before you even get started. And then the thought rang in my head. Well, how big is your God? Maybe you're thinking smaller because your thoughts about God are too small. So then I clicked on the other one. I said, oh, this was, ooh, ooh, ooh. See, sometimes we can see within the realm of how far we feel we can reach. And just a little further. All we need God for is just a little bit further. Amen. Just a little bit. Not much. You know, you, you can get to eight, but you need to get to ten. God's good for two. Amen. God's good for two. Yeah, God's good for two. So you're fine with ten because you know, I got eight already. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, I got eight. All God got to do is give me two and we good. Then the miracle has happened. But the one I was looking at, oh, eight, eight's not going to do nothing for it. I'm going to need more than two on the other side. Amen. God's side is going to have to be a whole lot more than my side. Amen. And it brought that thought, how big is your God? Because if he's only just a little bit bigger than you, is he very big? If he could only do a little bit more than you can do, how big is he? I'm closing, but I got to tell you, one time, I, I've always been taller and bigger than my older brother. He about that tall. I wasn't very tall at all. And in my younger, slimmer days, you know, I was in quite good shape. So when something would kick off, he would call me. He said, hey man, I need some help. I'm having some problems. Can you come? Sure I can. You know, I come over there, you know, all swole up like a bullfrog, <laughs> kicking in doors, like I was the man. And one day he called me. He was living down in the polo grounds. Those of you in New York know the polo grounds down in the Spanish Harlem. He said, I'm having some problems. I said, no problem, I'll be up there a little later. So I'm coming in, you know, I ain't asking no questions. I'm just going to start knocking out. That's it. All y'all that like to talk, y'all got the wrong attitude. I'm just going to start ka -ka -ka -ya. <laughs> releasing them. <laughs> Which one? That's the one. Oh! <laughs> so he took me. He said, he said, there in that building over there. Why well, I have a problem if it was more than one, I had a problem. As long as it wasn't the army, I was cool. Man. You know, you fighting, you gotta get hit, you gotta be, you know. <laughs> See some of y'all just left it right there. Hit, hit. That's why you can't believe God, because you ain't willing to get hit in your trial. Man. So we, go across the street, go into this building, walk in there, it's a pool hall. About five guys in there. You know, I say it very loudly. Who's the, you know, with the rest of the stuff. I don't talk like that no more, but y'all kind of get the, you know, who's the? And he said, those guys over there. So I was making my way over there, you know. 
Well, I'm about to swing. You know, I'm about to just light up on some people. You know, I'm going for the biggest one first. Cause when they see him drop, they're going to say, oh, what kind of monster is this? What kind of monster is this? He didn't run for the little peewee. He went, up, went, and went after King Kong first. So I about get halfway to King Kong, you know. And the back door opens. Like 35 guys come out of the back. So I turn around and look at my brother. I said, what about all of them? <laughs> well, I was suddenly outnumbered. It was beyond what I thought I could do. So I said to my brother, I said, we're going to have to handle this another day. <laughs> and we left. See, I saw my limitation. All of us have a limitation. I don't care who they, no, 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 no. I believe God for everything. Nonsense. Nonsense. All of us have a limitation. And the question is, on your limitation, how big is your God? On your limitation. See, some things your credit won't buy you. Something your, your father and your mother cannot give you. Something the bank is not going to loan you. Some doors people cannot open for you. It just can't happen that way. The question is, how big is your God? Because that's where you got to believe that God is big enough. See, now, there's certain ways you can look at this. You can say, Lord... Put the lions to sleep. Because that's one way he could do it. Lord, let them be full when he throw me in the den. Cause it won't, listen, I don't care how God does it. I don't care. You know, sometimes you got a situation and you're trying to figure out how God should do it. If he put them to sleep, he make them full, make them blind. I don't care what he does. I know I can't handle it on my own. So he's got to be bigger than my situation. I want to challenge you today. Look at somebody and ask them again, how big is your God? Now I want you to think about your circumstance. I want you, I want you to think about your circumstance. Because that's what your God's going to have to handle. And if your circumstance seems bigger than your God, then your circumstance is going to keep you overwhelmed because you're not going to think that your God can do anything about it. Come on down, ministers. How big? How big? Can your God handle your lion's den? Can he handle your burning, fiery furnace? Can he handle the pressure of your life? Is your God bigger than your sickness? Is he bigger than your financial woes? Is he? How big is your God? How big is he? Is he big enough to handle your problem? Because if he's not big enough to handle your problem, you got the wrong God. You got the wrong God. You got the wrong God. Your perspective. Your perspective has to change. Your perspective is going to have to change. Your idea, your understanding is going to have to change. You're going to have to see him as more than you have ever seen him before. See now, he progressively reveals himself. Because sometimes the need is not there. And because the need is not there, you're not seeing him that way. But the challenge today is how big? What can he do for you? How can he fix it? See, some people can't live right because they don't believe that God is big enough to keep them. They just don't believe it. They believe their flesh is stronger than God. And the truth is, that's a bald-faced lie. 
your flesh ain't even stronger than sickness. Amen. All you need a little touch of something and it'll take your little drive right away. A little sugar will do it. A little heart issue will do it. A little stroke will calm you down. It'll take the heat right out your fire. All you need is a spinal injury. And if something that small can calm you down, how big is your God? How big is your God? How big is your God? If your circumstances can play with your emotions and take you to the place that you're making bad decisions, is your God bigger than your emotions? Because your emotions may be what holds you up. your God. See, Pastor, you don't understand. No, you don't understand. You don't understand because your God is bigger than your problem. You know, I'm thinking about those three Hebrew boys. Those three Hebrew boys said, our God is able to deliver us from this burning, fiery furnace. But if not, we still won't bow. Why? Because he should be. He's bigger than this fiery furnace. He's not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. He's the God of the living. And that may sound like a contradiction to some of you. But listen, everything around God is a lie. Come on. Come on, this altar is open. Come on. This altar is open. How big is your God? Can he help me? Can he do anything? And sometimes your problem is because people have disappointed you. And you thought the people was God and the people are not God. We all got this. How big is your God? How big is your God? How big is your God? Come on. Come on. Come on. How big is your God? How big is your God? Come on. How big is your God? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory.
Big is your God. 